Chapter 139 A hundred sounds become yin too. Su Qing shook his head and expressionlessly looked at Senior Sister Ding. Senior Sister Ding, we've left the vine area. Please get off the boat. Hearing Su King's words, Zhao Zhongang was instantly excited. He thought to himself that this kid was still tactful and looked at Senior Sister Ding expectantly. Junior brother, which direction are you going in? Maybe it's on the way, Senior Sister Ding said with a sweet smile. Zhao Zhongang's expression turned ugly. Su Qing frowned. Seeing Su Qing frown, Senior Sister Ding's bright eyes moved slightly. After some thought, she spoke. Junior brother, the place in going to is the Western Reef Archipelago. It's only a five-day sea journey from here. If it's not on the way, it'll leave now. If it's on the way, I'm willing to pay another 200 spirit stones as a fee. Junior brother, what do you think? As Senior Sister Ding spoke, she took out two spirit tickets and stared at Su Qing with her beautiful eyes. Su Qing looked at the spirit tickets and was extremely tempted. He didn't expect that it would be so easy to earn spirit stones after going out to sea. The sea lizard island he was going to was located in the depths of the Western Reef Archipelago, so it naturally was on the way. If the other party wanted to ride for free, he would definitely not agree. However, if she were to give 200 spirit stones, after Su Qing thought about it, he felt that it was very reasonable. 200 spirit stones might seem astonishing, but after all, she had boarded his boat. According to the sex tradition, he had the responsibility of protecting her. It could be considered a temporary mission. Moreover, the sea was so dangerous and the mission was a little urgent. Hence, it was normal for her to give more spirit stones. At the thought of this, Su Qing nodded. The smile on senior sister Ding's face became even sweeter as she placed the spirit tickets in Su King's hand. As for Zhao Zhongang, his expression turned from ugly to bitter. When he looked at Su Qing, even though he knew that the other party wasn't ordinary, he still couldn't control the anger in his eyes. Su Qing directly ignored Zhao Zhongang's gaze and controlled the magic boat to move forward rapidly. He was in a good mood. He thought about how he could earn 200 spirit stones by just taking someone along with him. He felt that this was very worth it. The only thing that made him feel a little uncomfortable was that senior sister Ding had a lot to say. She seemed to have endless questions to ask, and most of them were related to him. Also, her gaze was always fixed on his face. This made Su Qing very annoyed and he just kept silent. However, the more silent he was, the more enthusiastic senior sister Ding became. This caused Su Qing to involuntarily speed up the magic boat wanting to complete this journey as soon as possible. As for Zhao Zhongang, his mentality was about to explode on the way. The flames in his eyes fused with the fire in his heart and seemed to have materialized. This was especially so when he thought about how much effort he had put in this time. In fact, his grandfather had even stepped forward to communicate with the other party's elders. Before he obtained this chance to be alone with her and perform, he didn't expect that his plan would actually be hijacked by a Piedmont disciple. He was going crazy and his entire body trembled. His countless grievances seemed like they could erupt out of his chest at any moment. This be asterisk TCH, she didn't even come to my boat for free and insisted on spending money to board that gigolo's boat. She clearly has her eyes on him. Is she blind? I, Zhao Zhongang, am countless times stronger than that kid. In terms of spirit stones, my net worth is countless. In terms of status, I'm a core disciple. In terms of background, my grandfather is an elder of the seventh peak. How can this kid compare to me? He can't even compare to a single strand of hair on me. What does he have other than the forbidden sea dragon whale? He's useless in everything else. He's just a pauper at the foot of the mountain. Isn't he just handsome? Can beauty beaten? As Xia Zhongeng's jealousy rose and fell intensely, the sun set and dust passed. The sea in the evening was even more mysterious. The setting sun was still burning, illuminating the undulating waves and dyeing them red. It was as though flames were spreading, flickering and rolling, each wave higher than the last. This lasted until the fire in the sky slowly extinguished and the flames of the sea gradually dimmed. The world then turned pitch black. From afar, the dim surface of the sea was covered in layers of scales, and the sea breeze was also a little lighter. It was as though the entire world was gradually calming down. It was not possible to sail at night. 
the degree of danger was much greater than during the day. Hence, Su Qing chose to anchor the boat. Senior sister Ding, who was at the side, sat beside Su Qing and took out food. Her smile was still sweet as she passed it to Su Qing. Su Qing didn't eat. After thanking her, he returned to the cabin and activated the inner protective barrier to enter seclusion. Junior brother, are you going to cultivate? I'll guard you. Senior sister Ding didn't mind Su Qing's coldness at all. After she smiled and spoke, she really sat cross-legged outside the cabin. This scene caused Zhao Zhaoneng, who was on the phoenix, to go crazy again. However, looking at senior sister Ding's beautiful face, he still endured it and said, from the phoenix, Senior sister, I have some sea fish here, we. Not interested, senior sister Ding said calmly. Senior sister, I there's no knee, I. Please be quiet, don't disturb junior brother's cultivation. Senior sister Ding lifted her head and glanced at Zhao Zhaoneng impatiently. Zhao Zhaoneng's face darkened. He gritted his teeth and stared fixedly at the cabin where Su Qing was cultivating. He was going crazy to the extreme in his heart but he was helpless. He could only meditate to calm his anger. Just like that, time slowly passed and very soon, it was late at night. While Su Qing and the other two were meditating, under the night sky, an abnormal change slowly occur in the deep seawater that no one noticed. In the sea, spakes of starlight gathered and gradually transformed into wisps of shadows that slowly floated to the surface of the sea these. Shadows seemed to be the mysterious and deep dreams that the black forbidden sea weaved for the travelers. However, as the shadows rose into the air, they continuously transformed into all kinds of sinister appearances, transforming into malicious ghosts, drowned humans, and rotting beasts. At the next instant, their original silence turned mournful. Waves of sharp cries that shook the soul tore through the air and spread in all directions. These sounds were abnormally tragic and frightening. Immediately, the dream became a nightmare. Su Qing and the other two instantly opened their eyes. Zhao Zhaoneng's pupils contracted, and senior sister Ding's expression was solemn. Her right hand was placed on her storage bag. Su Qing walked out of the cabin and his gaze froze. As far as the eye could see, countless evil ghosts rose into the air and flew crazily toward the end of the pitch black sky as though they had been summoned. They formed a group, then a crowd. It was sinister and paranormal. This was the night parade of a hundred ghosts. Su Qing lifted his head and stared at everything. He watched as the malicious ghosts rose into the air while emitting sharp cries. In his mind, the description of the night parade of a hundred ghosts appeared. There are wonders in the endless sea that mortals haven't heard of. With the golden crow Chi Yang as a companion, a hundred sounds form a tune heavenly voice welcomes the moon. God was delighted. When he closed his eyes and looked, the endless sea became forbidden. The hundred sounds became Yin one. If my sex disciples encounter them, don't move, don't touch, don't disturb. The words on the sea record mentioned a story. The story told all the seven blood eyes disciples who were going out to see that this sea that surrounded the Nanhuang continent was originally called the Anlis Sea. In the past, before the fragmented face of the god appear in the sky, there would occasionally be strange music echoing in the Endless Sea. This music was extraordinary. Ordinary people wouldn't be able to hear it even if they went out to sea. Only cultivators could hear a thing or two amidst the drifting music on the sea. The story also introduced the origins of this piece of music. The sun in the sky wasn't a star, but a huge golden crow divine bird. Its name was Chi Yang. Every morning, it would fly out of its bedroom in the depths of the endless sea and return at night. This cycle repeated endlessly as though it had a mission. Every time it returned to its bedroom at night, musicians would play a tune for it. This tune contained a hundred notes, forming a dreamy meaning. As for the name of the musical piece, it was called Heavenly Vos Welcomes the Moon. Every time the tune rang out, the bright moon would rise into the air and patrol the world on behalf of Chi Yang. Until one day, in the god's fragmented face arrived. Ki, who was floating outside the sky of the world, was very happy when he heard this tune. He narrowed his eyes and looked over. The instant his gaze landed, the endless sea boiled. The density of anomalous substances exceeded imagination, causing the endless sea to become a forbidden sea filled with dense, anomalous substances. As for the hundred notes that formed the tune, they were also invaded. The sounds turned into yin, and as if they had died, they turned into ghosts.
to Night Parade of a Hundred Ghosts.